William Bryan, who we believe is an accomplice to this murder, he should be charged with aiding and abetting the McMichaels in their execution of uh, Ahmaud Arbery. And it's just unbelievable, Amy, that they would want to film this. And, you know, it shocks the conscience. You just can't believe it, but it's real. In 2020, we're not talking about 1920. We're talking about in 2020. They can do this. There could be ocular proof on that video, but yet the law enforcement officials who came out to investigate this matter let them leave and go home and sleep in their beds at night. That's why it's so outrageous to us uh, people in communities of color, because we know if the shoe was on the other foot and it was Ahmad and his father Marcus in that pickup truck and they had a shotgun and a 357 Magnum and they chased Greg McMichael's son and broad daylight and end up killing him, they know they would have been arrested from day one and they know they would not have been given a bond. Nobody would have had to justify anything. So why the two justice systems in America, one for black America and one for white America? We're the United States of America. And even though us black people understand the Constitution wasn't written for us, as my hero Thurgood Marshall said, we're going to make the Constitution ours anyway, because we are Americans. I want to um, <clears throat> go to a piece that talks about, shortly after the shooting, the prosecutor for the Brunswick Judicial Circuit, Jackie Johnson, recused herself because Gregory McMichael had worked in her office. The case was then sent to George Barnhill, the district attorney in Waycross, Georgia, who later recused himself from the case after Mr. Aubrey's mother argued that he had a conflict because his son also works for the Brunswick district attorney. Um, and, but before he relinquished the case, Barnhill wrote a letter to the Glen County County Police Department, in the letter, which was obtained by The Times, he argued there was not sufficient probable cause to arrest Arbery's pursuers. Um, this is an astounding story. Explain the conflicts here. Again, um, McMichael, a retired police officer and investigator. Yes, ma'am, Amy. He was a police officer and an investigator for the district attorney's office and had worked for them for over 30 years. So. We are very distrustful of any legal or law enforcement uh, agencies in that southeastern part of Georgia, because we feel they all know the McMichaels, and they are going to be biased in favor of the McMichaels because of those relationships. And even the current prosecutor, we don't have trust for him because he has revealed his perspective. He had that video. He could have issued an arrest warrant based on just the video, like the Georgia Bureau of Investigations finally did when they took over the investigation, because it was probable cause in the video. What forced the release of this video this week? I mean, and it comes at the same time that Georgia has lifted its lockdown, so there was immediate protest. I mean, it's clear it's the protesters and the outcry across the country that have led to this um, to the arrests of the McMichaels. Um, talk about what forced this video release. And it also was just released on a local website. Yes, ma'am. Uh, apparently, uh, a lawyer or a former lawyer associated with the McMichaels, the murderous father and son duo who executed Amon Aubrey, released the video. And apparently, he said he released it because he felt that it would somehow exonerate this, uh, these killers. And it makes no sense to me. It's asinine how they feel uh, this hunting party, this hunting posse chasing this unarmed young African-American throughout that community was something that would exonerate them. Amy, they teach us in first-year law school about malice of forethought. That is, you know, what is in the mind of the killer. And we believe when they got in that truck with all that firepower going to confront this young black man, that they had evil intent, that you can look at their intentions 
and conclude that they should be held liable for murder because we know, again, if the shoe was on the other foot and it was two African-American men who got in their trucks with this kind of firepower and killed an unarmed young white man in broad daylight, that they would be charged and convicted with murder day one.